Two siblings and three of their friends travel to their grandfather's grave in Texas and fall victim to a family of cannibalistic psychopaths. Creeps, my name is Scara, Damsel of the Doomed, and today I'll be revealing five interesting facts about the 1974 horror movie classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I'll do so rather quickly because these bubbles won't last forever. <sighs> the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was directed by Toby Hooper, and it was written by Toby Hooper and Kim Hinkle, and it happens to be one of my very favorite horror movies. The basic synopsis of the movie revolves around a young woman named Sally and her paraplegic brother. They hear that their grandfather's grave has been vandalized. So Sally and her brother hop in the van with a few friends and they go to investigate. On the way there, they pass a slaughterhouse and they pick up a hitchhiker who turns out to be quite the psychopath. He cuts his hand in front of them they freak out and kick him out, but this is the point in the movie where the tension starts to build and it never lets go. Soon the group arrives at the family's old farmhouse and they discover a group of murderous cannibals living next door. One by one the group is attacked by a chainsaw wielding psychopath named Leatherface, played by Gunnar Hansen. The group must do everything they can to escape. After being inspired by Night of the Living Dead, Kim Hinkle and Toby Hooper decided they wanted to write a more modern and sinister version of Hansel and Gretel. To do so, they researched cannibals and serial killers, most notably Ed Gein. Old Ed wasn't only a serial killer, he was also a grave robber. He liked to dig up fresh graves and peel the skin off of the bodies and wear it like it was his own. He um, also liked to decorate his house with the bones of his victims. When they searched his house after they captured him, they found skulls on his bedposts and they found a human heart in his frying pan. And they found a woman deceased in his barn, field dressed like a deer. So Ed not only served as the main inspiration for Leatherface in A Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but he also served for the main inspiration of the villains in both Psycho and Silence of the Lambs. Fact number two, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is credited with originating several elements that is common now to the genre, including using power tools as murder weapons, and presenting the killer as a large and hulking figure. In fact, Leatherface inspired not only uh, Jason Voorhees, but also Freddy Krueger and Mike Myers. And depending on who you ask, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre might be considered the first slasher film along with Black Christmas, which also came out in 1974. However, some people say that that credit actually goes to Bay of Blood, which came out in 1971. Fact number three. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the least bloody horror films of all time. You see, Toby Hooper wanted to get a G rating for the film, and he decided to do so he would keep most of the violence and blood off camera. But that backfired on him, and it turned out to be much more terrifying that way. It was so terrifying that the ratings board gave him an X rating initially. He made cut after cut in an attempt to get a G rating, but they only awarded him with an R rating, and he finally released the movie with the R rating. Fact number four. With the exception of a little bit of copyrighted music that the filmmakers had access to, the soundtrack to the movie contains no musical instruments. Instead, they just used sounds that an animal might hear in a slaughterhouse. Fact number five, filming took place in July of 1973. It was very hot that summer and they filmed in a very old house. So, when they filmed the climactic dinner scene, the food on the table just began to rot and it began to smell 
ventilation was poor, it was super hot and miserable, and for 27 miserable hours, they had to withstand the stench of it all. It had to be disgusting. Final thoughts, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre holds up to this day. It had a very low budget of $60,000 initially, and uh, it was super visceral and very suspenseful and just downright gritty. But I think what makes it so terrifying is that everything you know that's violent really happens off screen. So you're allowed to use your imagination to uh, plug in all of the gore and the gruesome bits. And if you're like me, things can get pretty gory up here. Well, it looks like I'm almost out of bubbles, so I better wrap this up. Next time, I'll be revealing five interesting facts about the 1975 Canadian horror movie, Slither. Until then, my name is Scara, and I'll see you in your screams.